cherish my Bible. I had, when Jan and I started out, uh, she had a Bible. I always kidded her, kidded her because she had $20 in that Bible, and I said, that's why I married you. <laughs> Wouldn't have taken us <laughs> But uh, we didn't have a real study Bible. Now we have a Bible, probably of every Bible that's out there, and it's interesting how God has blessed us over the years and made it so we can study, we can search out the Word. A Bible is something that's personal. Uh, you really need to have your own Bible, and you need to cherish it, you need to love it, you need to say, Father, thank you that you sent your Word, and your Word gives eternal life. And I trust in your Word. I renew my heart and my mind, and I know that you are with me always, for your Word says I will never leave you nor forsake you. Do you believe that? Yes. Amen. And so now as we look and we turn over in our Bibles to the epistle of, uh, of, to the Philippians, chapter 4, we're going to start at verse 4. And, and we're going to let this, these words sink in. Uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. But you also must give yourself to the written word. Do you agree? Yes. Amen. How many of you have been went to school? <laughs> College. You had to have books, right? What happens if you didn't show up with your book? You didn't. It was pretty tough, right? Amen. And so when you come to the Bible, this is a training ground. This is a place where you're going to be challenged, you're going to be encouraged. You're going to maybe, the word may discipline you, but it's all for your good. Amen? Amen. And so I taught at the college up here, and uh, at the time that I was, I had my classes, the guys would wait for me. I would usually be there before them, but one time I came in, and this one man says to me, he says, just check me in. I said, what do you mean, check me in? Well, I'm going home. Just check me in. He said, if I would check him in, he'd get paid for coming. And I said, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You have to be in my class before I check you in. No, I don't need to be there. I, I don't care about what you're teaching on. And well, I said, if you're not there, you're not going to be checked in. <laughs> and he didn't like that. You, if I'm going to be here, you are going to be here. God's here with us, is he not? Yeah. Amen. We need to have the handbook. I know some of you have your phones and your laptops and everything else. Uh, maybe a pigeon flies in here and gets you in here. <laughs> the word must be before you. You must let your eyes see it. You must receive it and believe it. Amen. Uh, I know when I made a commitment with the Lord, I mean, I was so turned on. Uh, and I went from the back of the church, and everybody's going to move forward, <laughs> all the way to the front. And I was like a little bird. Feed me, feed me. How could I have missed all this that's happening? And these people are singing and worshiping God. I could hear some of you singing. You have beautiful voices. And you need to really sing out. God has given you a, a, a blessing, a gift of singing. Did you know that? You could probably go on uh, one of these programs. Uh, America's Got Talent. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So, Paul exhorts the church, the church, you and I, we are the church, to stand fast, be of the same mind, rejoice in the Lord always, in everything. You know, you we, when I read the scripture from Romans chapter 8, 28, all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. You agree with me? Yeah. But then when the testings come and the storms come, you're wondering, where's God in it all? And he's saying, hang on, I'll bring you through it. And you'll see the lesson that was there for you. Can you agree with that? And uh, 
and in everything believe that the Lord is faithful. He is faithful. And so this letter to the Philippians is a very strong letter for all of us to think on, meditate, ponder, and put it into our lives. This letter also is written to those whose names are in the book of life. To those names who are written in the book of life. What are you talking about, Pastor? Well, just up before he starts that letter, the question you need to answer, number one, is your name in the book of life? Yes. You answer that. Don't say anything out loud. <laughs> Because understand this, God has a book of remembrance. How many of you know that? Yeah. Now I've given you that, the answer to that. Yeah. There's a book of remembrance. You want it again? Malachi chapter 3, verses 16 through 18. God has a book of remembrance. Get your name in the book. Paul says to his, his brother in Romans 10, 8, but what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. God's word needs to be spoken to be activated in God's power. Would you agree with that? If I want to get the best out of our relationship with my children, or with my wife, with my friends, I must speak well. And I must speak of the love of God that's in my heart to flow out, to touch Jan's life, my kid's life. When I finish talking with my son, he lives in Pennsylvania, or my daughter, I always say, I love you. I've known too many people that I wish I could have said a little bit more because they left to be with the Lord. And, uh, or I had an opportunity to share with someone to find out they didn't uh, make it. And then you have the question, did they know the Lord? Was their name in the book of life? Well, then I have to lean on the fact that I know God is just. And it is not the will of God that any should perish, but that all should come to the truth. What's the truth? Jesus Christ said, I am the truth, the way and the life. No one cometh to the Father but through me. Amen? Amen. 1426 in John, I believe. Is that right? Yes. I'm right. Amen. Praise God. The word is near you and in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Now Paul, he went to his brethren, just like we should go to our friends as opportunities come, and tell them about the love of God when they're fearful or they're saying, what are these politicians doing? We can say with faith, nothing. <laughs> Only God has the answer. Ever since we abandoned God's word, abandoned God's ways, things have been collapsing. You have seen nothing yet. There's more on the horizon. Now, we are not called to live in fear, but in power and love and a sound mind. Amen? Amen? And he has given us a sound mind. I stand on that. When people ask me, how are you doing? I said, I have a sound mind. <laughs> are you sure? Well, that's what the Bible says. I believe it's 1 Timothy 1, 7. Now in verse 9 of, uh, of Romans 10, it says this. Now listen, remember, the word of God needs to be activated. Brother Dave led into that area of what to do. Now, some of you need to read. It's not like you're going to get saved all over, but you need to reaffirm to yourself, I have confessed with my mouth and I believe in my heart. Here's what how Paul said. That if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, raised him, raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now, what's wrong with that? You know, you could ask most of anyone out there in the, at Walmart, you believe there's a God? Oh, yes, I believe there's a God. 
you go to church or you have fellowship with us, I don't believe you have to be in the church to be saved. You're saved by your faith in Jesus Christ alone. Amen? Amen. You come to church to be with those of like mind. Right? There's a scripture that says, and you know this, Psalm 122. I, 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 I was thankful when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. You need to look that up. There's a blessing in that psalm. There's a blessing in all the psalms. And so, we activate it by confessing it. Now, no one had to tell me that. I, I received Christ into my heart in a UPS truck. I was challenged by a young lady sticking her finger in my face and saying to me, uh, how can you talk about my Jesus with that cigarette hanging out of, uh, out of your mouth? Uh, what's a cigarette? Well, guess what? It'll kill you. It says it right on the back. <laughs> I used to walk the gangway at uh, the Ojibwe uh, jail for 35 years, and the only thing I got out of it when they were allowed to smoke is stinky clothes. And as I would tell them, well, I can smoke, I can drink. Yeah, you can. You may stink on the way up if you're saved. <laughs> And you don't want to be drunk on the way up. You want to rejoice in the fact that God is taking you. Amen. 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 And so, uh, no, you can go to you can go to heaven smoking. Some I know some preachers, good preachers, in years back that smoked pipes. Now, at one time, I had a problem with that because I was set free instantly. Oh, I know where I was going. I was searching for what I was saying earlier. I sat in that truck and I said, Lord, I do not understand this. I don't even say it. I said, Lord. I said, God, but whatever you want me to do, wherever you want to send me, Lord, I, I just, I need to know if you're real. And when I humbled myself and I bowed my head and I just said those words or something like that, and the next time I stepped on that brake pedal to release it, and stepped on that gas, I knew that I knew I was going to be a different person. And I wanted to be a different person. My life stinketh. <laughs> but now it had purpose and direction, and I knew that my life would be different. He spoke in my heart, and I don't know how to explain other than what I'm saying to you. He said, I will take care of you, I will guide you, and guess what? You're going to Ironwood, Michigan. <laughs> Or it snows all the time. Wow, praise God. All right, we got to move along here. I'm getting sidetracked here. Um, and so Paul goes on and says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Uh, in case you missed it, he says it again. Again, I say rejoice. <clears throat> in verse 5, And let your gentleness be made known to all men. Practice being compassionate. Practice being gentle and loving, forgiving. There are people you need to forgive. If you do not forgive, God will not forgive you. And it's not that he left you, but he just said, you stop the flow. You stop the flow. You allow yourself to be entrapped by your own words. Why? Because you know the Lord is at hand. He's with us and in us. Never to leave us, the Bible says. Verse 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. God answers prayer. Do you believe that? Yeah, yes. He answers prayer. Not when you expect it to be answered in his time. But sometimes you forget what you pray, so we just let, okay, it's in, the, in here and wherever it goes. Uh, in verse 7, result of standing in faith. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, peace can be our rudder. Jan and I have prayed over the years for different things, or asked for guidance, and then we were in agreement, and we had the peace of the Lord, 
and we would be steadfast and we would just keep doing what we're doing, serving where we could, loving people, uh, and doing many other things in our walk with the Lord. Uh, at one time we had a soup kitchen. Jan and I end up being babysitters. Everybody would bring their kids. Jan would watch the kids and I would make the soup sometimes, she would make it, and then others. And we were serving our area. Find something to do and do it as unto the Lord. We used to have the freedom to go into the retirement homes. I used to close the church down, take the whole church, and we'd go into one of the retirement homes and we would preach and sing. That's where I found out I could sing. <laughs> Shame on you. We're going to have to sing a song at the end here. Uh, uh, the Bible said Jesus conquered the devil. He destroyed his works. He destroys, he was destroyed, and it says Satan comes to seek and destroy. Jesus came to give us the abundant life. Amen? Amen. I'll stay with the abundant life. And the Bible tells us in James, it says resist the devil and he will flee. Amen? Amen? So if there's temptation, resist him. And he will flee. But there's another part of it. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Yes. So just don't stop there. Well, I got him off my back. No, you draw near to God. Giving him praise. Thanking him for all his goodness and his mercy. Then he goes on to tell us how this happens. You need the key is meditate on these things. Finally, brethren, whatever, whatever, oh, let me write it out. It says, uh, finally, brethren, uh, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble. You know, I just thought it came to my mind. I used to have a brother, and I used to call some of the different people in the church that I knew and who had the ability of preaching and teaching God's word to come up to share if they wanted to. Some of you say, oh, I'm not coming next week. <laughs> no, I would ask you and know that you had a heart to do that. And I had one brother, and he, I think he used to sleep with his eyes open when I was preaching. And when he would share, he came forever and I'd sit down. Say it. Get it out. Jan knows what I'm talking about. You, some of you probably know. Because that's how he does. He does. He's not in a hurry. I'm always in a hurry. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, and whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be anything praiseworthy, worthy, meditate on these things. In other words, take control of your thoughts, casting down all vain imagination. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will keep your minds and your hearts in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. The things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Who will be with you? God. God will be with you. And so that your uh, homework for the week is to read this, continue to read the rest of this chapter and get the benefits and the blessing of it. If you to say that your name is written in the book of life, you are called to be responsible. Pressing towards the goal in Christ Jesus. Press on, church. Don't let this hold everything in 23, it's past. You cannot do it. Look forward to the new things that are ahead. Amen. And know that in this scripture, I would encourage you to read the whole book of Philippians by next week. It's four chapters. Can you do it? Yeah. yeah. There's three of you. <laughs> the rest of you remain silent. And I want to say, how long did it take? And you know, I don't know why God chose me. Or why he chose Dave. Or he chose Randy or Jerry or someone else. But we step up to the plate and we say, Lord, for your glory and your honor. Amen? Amen. So if you're called upon, just give what you have and God will bless it. 
And John 15, 5, it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. You can do nothing without me. So know that the Lord is in you. He will help you, and he will speak through you. And everyone said, Amen. 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 So the singers will come, and I will give you a closing thought for this week uh, from Ephesians chapter... Chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. You want to look it up later. Now to him who is able to do exceeding, exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. The power can't work in you if you don't have the power in you. Amen? Someone said, well, how do you do that? I trust God. Before I got became a, a born-again Christian, and before I got filled with the Spirit of God, I would have never come up here to share. It's the power of God in me. Amen. To him be glory in the church, by Christ Jesus, to all generations forever and ever. 